Mr. Rodriguez, our secretary, Mr. Martinez. Uh, we have Mr. Howe, Ms. Vallejo, and myself. And of course, the superintendent of school is uh, Mrs. Chavez. We do have a uh, quorum, and we will follow up with a Pledge of Allegiance by the Mercedes High School JROTC. Uh, invocation by Trustee Mr. Garcia. Please rise. Please bow your heads. Lord, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to gather here to do the work of our district. Please guide us in our decision making. Let what we do here today forever benefit our students, staff, and community. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Chase High School, JRTC, and the staff and the teachers. And thank you very much, Mr. Garcia. Moving along on the agenda, we have open forum public comment. Uh, Ms. Buckner? No, Okay, moving on to the superintendent's report. Uh, Ms. Chavez, A through 6. At this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Espinosa, public relations, to please proceed. Good evening, board members. Superintendent Ms. Chavez, at this time we will be recognizing several of our students here at Mercedes ISD. Up, uh, first up we have Mr. McKinney with the, the band UIL Solo and Ensemble. Good evening, Superintendent Chavez, President Hernandez and board members and community members. It's my pleasure to announce our UIL solo winners of this year and ensembles. Some advanced to state and I'll kind of indicate them when, they, when we get to them. But students for both band and orchestra. Uh, congratulations to the following members for performing and earning a superior rating at the annual UIL solo ensemble contest. The contest was held on Saturday, February the 18th at San Benito High School. A total combined 71 medals were earned by the Tiger student musicians. A total of 18 solos advanced to state. A total of eight small ensembles advanced to the state level as well. Congratulations to the students, and here we go. Uh, Bella Reynoso on violin. When you hear your name, come on up. <laughs> Maria Ozuna on violin. Jaden Abrego on flute. Jennifer Hernandez on flute. Annette Garcia on clarinet. Saul Ariza on alto saxophone. Thomas Martinez on French horn. Maya Yanis on French horn. Yoandri Martel on euphonium. <laughs> Noah Diaz on snare drum. Miguel on CISO on snare drum. Amanda Leal on snare drum. 
Gabriela Pardilla on snare drum, and Alexia de la Garza on keyboard. The next students also took the extra step of memorizing their solo, and so they, advanced, they got a first division advanced to state. Uh, Leo Flores on violin. Wow. Elena Garcia on violin. <laughs> Alonso Cabrera on clarinet. <laughs> Isaiah Banda on alto sax. <laughs> Esteban Cepeda on alto sax. <laughs> Charles Chacon on tenor sax. Jared Gonzalez on French horn. Jesus Martinez on French horn. Francisco Alvarado on tuba. Jacob Garibay on tuba. Molina Garcia on snare. Kevin Mendoza on snare. DJ Perez on snare. Zeus Solis on snare. Leo Valdez on snare. Olivia Chacon on timpani. Devin Hernandez on keyboard. Cody Ochoa on keyboard. Ethan Sustaita on keyboard. And Jesus Tamez on piano. These are all the students who got a first division and the second group are the ones who uh, advanced to the state level. Our ensembles, that, give them round, the round of applause. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Some of them couldn't make it tonight because they're home practicing. <laughs> uh, <coughs> ensembles earning a first division. They're small little ensembles, trios, which is three people, uh, quartets, quintet, uh, percussion ensembles, they perform together, work and perform together, and they earned a first division and advanced to the state level for playing a uh, class one so, uh, ensemble. Our trumpet trio, Alina Gonzalez, Maya Ledesma, and Chantel Torres. <laughs> Our euphonium trio, Albert Moreno, Gilbert Moyan, Abel Ramirez. And kind of noted, two of those students played other instruments before this year, so they did a really good job. Uh, brass Quintet, Jared Abrego, Jacob Garibay, Jesus Martinez, Gilbert Moya, and Paul Rodriguez. Uh, percussion ensembles, we have a Clintonian sketch, A, which is the name of the song, Miguel Anciso, Victoria Cortez, Alexia de la Garza, Cristo Ibarra, Soledad Mendoza, Gabriela Padilla, and Jesus Tamez. <laughs> Big Country, which is an ensemble, Leia Anzaldua, Saul Ariza, Omar Garcia, Steven Garcia, Mia Gonzalez, Devin Hernandez, Veronica Melgoza, Kevin Ochoa, Cody Ochoa, and Ethan Susaita. Our Clintonian Sketch B, uh, Joseph Canales, Madison Galvan, Davelin Hernandez, Amanda Leal, Lizette Moreno, DJ Pettis, Brian Reyes, and Zeus Solis. <laughs> Sacrificial Right is the name of the song. Olivia Chacon, Melina Garcia, Kevin Mendoza, Jennifer Ortega, and Leo Valdez. In the final ensemble, the Gilded Cage, Noah Diaz, Christopher Garza, Matthew Martinez, Joshua Moreno. <laughs> of course, thank you to all the band directors who helped uh, help get them through to their, their uh, next step. Come on up, band directors. Let's take a picture. Thank you. 
Next uh, is our uh, UIL orchestra and bands earning first division and sweepstakes this year. It's my pleasure to announce that each of the ensembles that attended UIL this year earned UIL trophies for the performance and or sight reading portion of the evaluation. All the students are to be commended as well as their directors as is a team effort. The middle school bands earned a plaque for a superior rating in one of the portions. On a side note, we are very proud that all the 8th graders who learn how to play an instrument online as 6th graders, big challenge, uh, no easy feat, have stuck with it, and so they've done a real good job in coming along. Our Sergeant Harrow Middle School Symphonic Band, they earned an excellent rating for the concert and a superior rating for their sight reading. The band is conducted by Joe Ayala with assistance from Eduardo Rivas, Jose Aguilar, Edgar Berlanga, and myself. Come on up. Any Harrow Band members and the directors. Next, our Sergeant Chacon Middle School Concert Band earned superior ratings for their concert and an excellent rating for their sight reading. The band is conducted by Lado Salinas with assistance from Nancy Coronado, Esteban Mendoza, Edgar Berlango, and myself. Come on up. And the Sergeant Chacon Middle School Symphonic Band earned also earned a superior rating for their concert and an excellent rating for their sight reading. The band's conducted by Nancy Coronado with assistance from Alado Salinas, Esteban Mendoza, Edgar Berlanga, and myself. And if any, I think there's some students from the band, come on up. <laughs> Thought I saw a couple. They're being shy. Uh, so these are the middle school bands. Uh, the high school ensembles earned a sweepstakes award for both the superior rating in concert and sight reading portions. The non-varsity strings, they earned a superior rating for their concert and sight reading portion, earning a sweepstakes award. The orchestra is conducted by Natalie Olivares with assistance from Mark Reina and Eli Rainey and Elijah Lopez. Come on up. And any students up. Our varsity strings earned a superior rating for the concert and sight reading portion, earning a, the sweepstakes award. The orchestra is conducted by Mark Rainey with assistance from Natalie Olivares and Elijah Lopez. And the varsity members, come on up. The symphonic band 
earned a superior rating for the concert and sight reading portion, earning a sweepstakes award. The symphonic band is conducted by Joe Ayala with assistance from all the band directors. Come on up, symphonic band members. And finally, the Wind Ensemble earned a superior rating for their concert and sight reading portion, earning a sweepstakes award. The Symphonic, the Wind Ensemble is conducted by myself with assistance from all the band directors. Wind Ensemble members, come on in. And one more, our Mercedes Winter Guard. This spring, the Mercedes Winter Guard had a successful season as they competed in the Texas Educational Color Guard Association circuit. Winter Guard is a competitive performance-based activity which incorporates choreogra choreographed staging, dance, and manipulation of equipment such as flags, props, rifles, and sabers. Their 2023 program entitled Shine earned them the following awards this season. Third place in Scholastic Regional AA at the first Valley View contest, winning best movement, best design, and a promotion to the next classification. Second place in Scholastical Region A at the second Valley View contest, winning best design. First place in Scholastic Regional A at the Lee High School contest in San Antonio, winning best movement. The Winter Guard earned a spot in the South Zone Championship on March 25th and earned a final score of 81.75, which is the highest score of the season. The Guard is under the direction of Mr. Eduardo Rivas and Ms. Jennifer Montemayor. Thank you to all the Mercedes band staff, band boosters, administrators, and parents for all of your support this season. Big congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKinney. Congratulations again to our band orchestra and Winter Guard students and directors. Up next, we have our athletic director, Mr. Roger Adame, presenting the boys and girls powerlifting teams.
Good evening, Board, uh, Superintendent Chavez, Board President Hernandez. Uh, we're here to recognize our powerlifting team. Uh, past few years, the powerlifting team has been on the rise. Uh, you know, these kids have put in a lot of great uh, effort and time. You know, if you get to watch these athletes compete, you know the, the, the amazing feats they're able to put on these bars. And, you know, it's an all-day event. And so, uh, you know, they've, they've competed and won some championships along the way. We had some regional qualifiers and state qualifiers. So overall, we appreciate the support from our administration, from the board, uh, and we're here to recognize them. We'll start off with our girls. Uh, our girl powerlifting team uh, always competed in over seven meets and finished in the top three in each one. Leah Cavazos, Leon Saldua, I'm going to call regional qualifiers Miranda Abrigo, Noelia Rodriguez, Jaylen Colunga, Candice Costilla, Debbie Ann Cavazos, Chloe Belcher, Gabriela Herrera, also Texas High School WPA Academic First Team. Sarah Longoria, regional qualifier, second place in the 5A State Texas High School Women Powerlifting Association, total weight 1,050. We had Isabel Garcia, regional qualifier, Texas High School WPA, fourth place in state, weight division, state uh, weight 950 pounds total. Karina Rabble, regional qualifier, sixth place in the state meet, total weight 940 pounds. And Bridget Sanchez, regional qualifier, fourth place in the state, Total weight, 785 pounds. We also uh, want to recognize our coaches, Alvaro Gonzalez and Natalia uh, uh, Marquez. Oh, okay. Take a quick picture. All right, next up is our boys powerlifting. Tiger powerlifting had a successful season due to their hard work, consistency, and a passion for making gains in the weight room. The boys won team championships at Rio Grande City, Nikki Rowe, and McCann High School Invitationals. Individual lifters earned medals and were rewarded for their dedication to self-improvement. Isaiah Castro, Devin Trevino, Ledesas Enriquez, and Brian Maldonado qualified for the regional championship and advanced, and advanced to the state championship meet in Abilene, Texas. The Tigers were also committed to excellence in the classroom as Matthew Gutierrez earned all state academic honors. We would like to thank the Mercedes High School administration team, Coach Paul Reyes, Judy Gutierrez, and all the board and teachers and staff for the support throughout the season. Lifters were Gerardo Sanchez, Ulises Enriquez, Brian Maldonado, Devin Trevino, Isaiah Castro, Israel Magaña, Eddie Gonzalez, Ethan Anciso, Luis Martinez, Dorian Martin, Matthew Gutierrez, Nathaniel Aguero, Barrett Rabo, Oliver Hernandez, Angel Trujillo, Isaiah Lopez. Regional qualifiers, Isaiah Castro, Devin Trevino, Ulysses Enriquez, Brian Maldonado, Academic All State, Matthew uh, Gutierrez. Coaches were Coach Geraldo Perez and Bray Gonzalez. Thank you, Coach Adame. Up next, we have our CT director, Ms. Debbie Rebel, presenting FFA students and Cosmetology Skills USA. I was built for speed, for whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, good evening, Board of Trustees, Interim Superintendent Chavez, Mercedes ISD personnel, and Mercedes community members. I stand before you tonight as a proud CT director, highlighting the amazing accomplishments that are taking place in the Mercedes ISD CT department. Tonight we have the following groups of students that I would like to recognize. First, I would like to start, to start off with Mercedes FFA. The Mercedes FFA had a stellar show season this past year, putting notches in all the livestock divisions in the following major shows, San Antonio, Houston, South Texas Ag Roundup, and of course the Rio Grande Valley Livestock Show. Our students racked up the following. Seven reserve and breed champions in the breeding cattle and swine divisions, one overall champion showman in cattle, one reserve grand champion showman in the swine division, nine first place rosettes, nine second place rosettes, and six third place rosettes. Mercedes FFA also qualified six market hog hogs in the sale of champions totaling $10,550 in the live auction. Our FFA also had 11 SAEs or livestock, uh, livestock exhibits that placed top five of their class. Please put your hands together for these FFA members. We are also proud to have an individual in our chapter that managed to catch three scramble calves in the three major shows. San Antonio, Houston, Rio Grande Valley Livestock Show totaling $4,250 into the purchase of next year's cattle project. Uh, Ms. Caitlin Hendricks, congratulations. I also want to thank Mr. Uh, Eduardo Salinas for all his hard work with our students. Uh, great job, students. We look forward to next year. Following that from last board meeting, um, these students are not here tonight. We, I would like to recognize our cosmetology students. They had advanced the Skills USA State Cosmetology Competition that took place March 31st through April the 1st in Corpus Christi. The students competed in the Skills USA State Cosmo Competition, and all of the students received either a blue ribbon or a red ribbon. They are not here tonight because they are they are going to bed early. They're getting ready to take their practical uh, exam for their industry-based certification tomorrow morning. So uh, we wish them the best of luck. I do want to recognize them by name, though. Vanessa Amico, Galilea Martinez, Keina Nunez, Cassandra Rosales, Selena Bueno, Sherilyn Costilla, Brianna Flores, Natalie Garcia, Sabrina Castro, Dominique Martinez, Deja Hinojosa, and Karen Lopez. Uh, I also want to give a huge shout out to Ms. Sarah Lial. She's our amazing Cosmo teacher. She's been doing an amazing job with our students. So congratulations to our students. Um, I would also like to uh, extend an invitation for our second annual CTE Fair. It is taking place on Thursday from 5.30 to 7.30 there at the, at the high school. So uh, if you can, please make your way out there. Uh, we would really love to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Rebel. Up next, we have uh, our LPC, Christina Salceda, presenting a mental, our mental health annual walk. Uh, good evening, board members, board president, Ms. Superintendent, board members, concerned citizens, and administrators. I have here uh, two LPCs who are going to be presenting some information on a mental health walk run. We encourage you to participate, so uh, I'm going to hand it off to Ms. Casey Salceda and Rocio Perez. Okay. Good evening. Uh, we would like to extend an invitation to our second annual mental health walk run 
This year, our approach was uh, to really extend our hand to local community businesses, as well as several mental health services. Uh, this year's national message is Together for Mental Health, which highlights the importance that mental health is a community duty to address. Uh, we're including the flyer as an invitation to the community along with an itinerary of events, which includes student performances as well. Local businesses such as Whataburger, Chick-fil-A, Sonic, and HEB have quickly uh, showed support by uh, extending a hand to participate and to donate various uh, items. Uh, we also have a DJ that's going to be there. So this year, last year was our inaugural year, so it was a little smaller, but this year we kind of went bigger and we really wanted to make sure that everybody was included and that everybody was well aware of the services that are uh, in our community. Um, we will also have stress screenings available with uh, information on counseling services. So our primary goal as we start looking to the summer is to make sure that we get information out to the community that there are services available during the summer and to make sure that everybody gets that information. So we invite everybody to head out there. Uh, we're gonna have, like I said, a one mile fun run walk run. And so we're gonna uh, publicly put Mr. Canales on the spot to participate and not pass out water. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that, that's how we have to do it. We have to put him on the spot. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Safe Schools. Up next, we have our math coordinator, Mr. Mejia, presenting math and literacy framework grant. Good evening, uh, Board President, Mr. Oscar Hernandez, Interim Superintendent, uh, Ms. Chavez, and the Board of Trustees and the community of Mercedes ISD. Thank you. I now have Ms. Guerra, she's gonna be passing out, uh, this is our final uh, framework for math. Uh, once again, uh, I'll be presenting on the instructional framework for, for mathematics. I've given you a hard copy for the final instructional framework for mathematics. I will be presenting to you how we develop the framework. So what is the instructional framework? Next slide, please. So take a minute and just review the, the fr sample framework that we're given there. This framework uh, is a major outcome of the Strong Foundations for Instructional uh, Framework Grant that we were awarded in this past fall. I want to point out three key features of the framework. First, it begins with a vision for math instruction. That the first paragraph above the graphics below the graphic is the second important feature of the framework is a series of belief statements. And these belief statements state that what the district release are the qualities of effective math instruction. And lastly of the framework, it concludes with a table that lists the actions that the various stakeholders in the district shall be taking to do part, their part in helping students to be successful. Next slide, please. In addition to the sample framework, TEA also provided a rubric that will be used to evaluate the frameworks that are crafted by the district. Here are some key features of the rubric. As discussed, the framework must contain a vision statement, belief statements, and stakeholder actions. There are rubric requirements that clarify what is expected in each of these elements. In addition, there are requirements about the length of the document, three pages at most. TA also encouraged districts to be use readable, parent-friendly language. Next slide, please. And perhaps the most important, there is a requirement for the framework that we be rooted in research-based instructional strategies known as the Arby's for mathematics. Prior to drafting the framework for math instruction, every district participated in this grant has been required to engage in a collective learning series that digs into these Arby's for mathematics. Next slide, please. So TA designed a series of sessions outlining each of these five Arby's. The balance of conceptual and procedural understanding, depth of key concepts, coherence of key concepts, productive struggle, and assessment practice. On January 17 and 18, our district gathered to engage in the Arby's training. Since we are going to begin implementing our framework in the elementary grade band, we included teachers interventionists and principals from each of our four elementary campuses. We also included 
uh, district personnel such as myself, the math coordinator, the data fellow, our bilingual director, federal program director, and special ed director, and our assistant superintendent of curriculum of instruction, Dr. Castillo, was also able to join us. We intentionally chose a variety of stakeholders to attend the Arby's training from the teacher level on up to the assistant superintendent because we need it for the framework to represent the perspective of variety stakeholders. So the purpose of this instructional framework. Next slide, please. So this figure shows the model that we were following for identifying areas for improving our instructional practice in mathematics. It's pretty straightforward. First, we identify our ideal practices in the math instruction. We call this the set of practices our ideal end state. Then we compare our current practices to our desired end state. Whenever we see that our current practices are not yet ideal, we call that a gap and we target gaps to changes in practice. Next slide, please. So I want you to take a few seconds and just uh, and think about this question silently. Where does this instructional framework fit in? If you're thinking that our framework will be documented that defines our desired end state of math instruction, then you'll, you got it. We have dedicated considerable time and effort of crafting a framework of math instruction because in ultimately this framework will drive our instruction practices for years to come. Next slide, sorry. Next, next slide, Mr. Sorry. As part of the grant, we are also doing some data collection to establish a current data, uh, current state of math instruction. Next slide. And lastly, we are engaging what is referred as to the gap analysis. We are identifying practice places where our current practices can improve to bring us closer to our ideal end, state, end of state. So this is how we started with the work. We started with a collected team. Before we present the instruction framework for which we are requesting to the board for approval, we actually had to um, we had to outline the process for the Mercedes ISD framework. We had a corrective team that we met, and after a collective team, I formed a smaller group who focused on the nitty gritty, the hard work of crafting all the elements of the framework. This group included representation from each four, of our four elementary campuses and greatly appreciated the hard work and dedication from Ms. Erica Casades, Alisa Tejerina, Ms. Cindy Bustamante, Silvia Alejandro Garza, and Ms. Guerra, and Mr. Mendoza from Carnegie Learning and developing the framework together. The framework development team met in one hour increments once or twice a week throughout this spring semester. We crafted each of the three components of the framework one at a time. Our release about math instruction drive everything else in the framework, so we crafted those first. Once we had the belief statements, we, looked, we took some time to develop the vision statement that represents our desired outcomes for students and math instruction. And lastly, we focused on where the rubber hits the road and we crafted the stakeholders actions, we created the belief statements. We took some time to develop the vision mission that was represented and aligned throughout the math instruction. Next time. During the beliefs collective learning, each campus crafted belief statements that represented their perspectives of effective math instruction. The math framework development team did the work for aligning these beliefs for the Arby's, had some very robust discussions and eventually solidified our four belief statements that are included in the current version of the framework. Next, after following the belief statements, a team developed a vision by asking and answering two questions from a perspective of math instruction. What are our aspirations for students? And if those aspirations are realized, what impact will it have on students? We did this in a very literal sense. Every team member submitted their answers to these questions. They were reviewed each of the other's responses and together we came up with a vision statement and very proud of it. Next, once we took our beliefs and vision statements, we finalized and we moved on to the stakeholder actions. With a regard to stakeholder actions, we had two primary considerations. We wanted actions that were aligned across the stakeholder groups and we wanted actions that were of course aligned to our beliefs and vision. Our first step for us brainstorm stakeholder actions that supported our belief statements, making sure to consider actions for each stakeholder group. 
Then we compared and brainstormed together the actions that the example that the TEA provided, some of theirs were excellent, but after comparing our work to TEA and putting the best parts of it together, we arrived to our final set of stakeholders. We will be seeking board approval in May's board meeting to look at the final draft statement. Since, since our framework is all done, the next steps, what's next is the implementation. Next, please. Since our framework is complete, we are now in the process of collecting more data and regard to our current date state and analyzing, analyzing the gaps in our practice. Ultimately, we plan to make specific recommendations about the changes in practice and that can bring us into alignment from our framework. Next, please. And this is the plan for implementation right now, the timeline. So we collect it and we'll be anticipating to making recommendations in the coming weeks. Thank you. And I think I gave you a card copy of the, our, our framework. That way you can have it and see it and review it and look at it. So we're seeking for uh, port approval for our following. We'll be submitting this to TEA as well. And so this is something good for the district. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Okay, that concludes the superintendent's report. Let's uh, move along with the action agenda. A, curriculum and instruction. A, one, discussion possible action to approve the 2023-2024 Mercedes High School nine-week instructional calendar. Uh, Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the nine-week instructional calendar for um, Mercedes High School as presented with your attachments. Okay, colleagues, I need to entertain a motion to approve the recommendation from admin motion okay, a motion from mr. Martinez second please second okay. second from mr. Uh, Rodriguez any discussion any question any discussion Uh, I guess uh, pointing out the obvious for the uh, for the public is this is uh, approved through the teachers, uh, the committees, et cetera. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, if there's any more discussion, colleagues. I guess uh, move along with a uh, motion for Mr. Martinez, second by Mr. Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor, saying aye. 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 Okay. Anyone opposed? Okay. A motion passed unanimous. Mm, next one, colleagues. A2, discussion possible action to approve the MOU between Mercedes ISD and Hidalgo County Head Start program from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2026. Uh, Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the approval with the brief uh, presentation. I have representatives from Head Start. Good evening and welcome. Hi. Good evening. Good evening, board, and good evening, uh, Board President Hernandez and Superintendent Chavez. Thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to continue to work with your team on this great partnership. We've had this MOU in place for quite a few years now. We've been really successful. As a matter of fact, our, our services are now being provided to you here at, at the Mel campus with uh, eight classrooms. We're hoping to extend our MOU to provide additional services to a, two additional classrooms over at Travis Elementary. So we're really excited. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to continue working with us in providing Head Start services to your community. These are services that are needed uh, very much so for the, the children of, of your community of, of low income. So thank you so much. Uh, I believe you have the MOU in front of you. I don't know if you have any questions we can answer at this time. Uh, I, like I mentioned, we have had a partnership with you. We're extending it. We, we're bringing in a qualified certified teachers now into your district. So we're really excited about uh, the possibility of, of really providing quality services to your community. I don't know if you have any questions. Any uh, questions? Any dialogue, colleagues? Just congratulations on recruiting, recruiting more students and extending the program now to We'll be having it at Travis, you mentioned. Yes, we're really excited about that. Uh, Ms. Hernandez has been really instrumental in, in, in uh, making this, this partnership work. 
thank you to, to Ms. Chavez as well for, ha for having an open mind for the support in, in helping us bring this, this services to your community, as I mentioned. And, and I apologize for Ms. Peña not being here tonight. Unfortunately, she got really sick last night and she was really hoping to be here to meet you. Uh, but she's our executive director now. So on her behalf, thank you again. If there's anything that we can do, we're, our main office is in Edinburgh, but Ms. Hernandez has I'm a way of, of contacting us. So thank you so much. Thank for you. your support. Thank you. And on a final note, congratulations on your awesome kids. Oh my goodness, it was wonderful to see. I was telling Ms. Hernandez, I was a band member. So it's, <laughs> I, it's very dear to my heart. But to see the wonderful accomplishment, not just in band, but in athletics and, and, and in the FFA, it's just wonderful to see. Congratulations, you're doing an awesome job with your kids. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, colleagues, we have a, a recommendation of admin. May I entertain a motion? So moved. Okay, I have a motion from Ms. Vajal. A second. second, please. Second. Second for Mr. Howe. Any discussion? Okay, uh, well, if there's no more discussion, we have a motion from Ms. Vajal. Uh, second by Mr. Howe. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed to saying nay? Okay, motion passes. Um, Business Office B1, discussion of possible action to approve the budget amendment, general operating <coughs> number six. Uh, Ms. Chavez, please. The administration recommends the budget amendment as presented. Okay, I'd like to have, uh, well, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Garcia. Any discussion, colleagues? See if I have any notes here. Hold on, colleagues. No, I don't have any. Okay, uh, any more discussion? Okay, so we have uh, a motion from Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed to saying nay? Okay, motion passes unanimous. Uh, B2, discussion possible action to approve renewal of external auditor contract RFQ. 306-071-22-372, Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the extension. This is year two of possible three. Okay, yes. may I entertain a motion, please? Colleagues? So moved. Okay, second. a motion for Mr. Garcia, second? Yes. Second. Second for Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? Um, I think they're doing a fantastic job. I mean, uh, they've gone through some really, uh, some really good uh, challenging accounting principles, and uh, I hope they continue doing the, uh, the good work that they've done in the past, that I've been on the board. I know that Mr. Howe and Mr. Martinez were on board when we had some really difficult financial issues, but uh, we steadfast, and uh, so we're doing really well. That's my professional and personal opinion about it. I don't know if anyone wants to add about our auditors. No. Okay, if there's no more discussion, we have a motion from Mr. Garcia, second by Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor, all in favor of saying aye? Aye. aye. Any, anyone opposed to saying nay? <coughs> okay, motion passes unanimous. B3, discussion possible action to approve the advertised RFP for self-funded plan, third-party administrator, preferred provider organization network access. Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends is presented and CFO will be available for any questions that you may have. Okay, colleagues, any uh, discussion? Uh, Ms. Garcia, I have a quick question, if it's okay. I think it basically is gonna cover most of the other items in there. Okay, this is uh, Ma'am, and uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, sir. Uh, just a real quick, this is the, the first step that uh, we're going to proceed, right, for yes, sir. looking at? We've been working with Vadi Risk Consulting. Okay. And they've been assisting administration in uh, preparing the RFPs that will go out this weekend. Okay. To Ma go ahead. Currently, we have United Healthcare providing the service. And this will, this, these RFPs will begin September 1st of 2023. Okay. Okay, is there any more uh, questions, 
colleagues, I think it's uh, imperative that we keep an eye on the, the whole process. I know uh, some of us just came on board, but this is one of the big uh, ticket items. I don't know if Mr. Howe wants to add anything to. Uh, yes, the the same model that we had with the uh, piece. Yes. I'd like to commend the board uh, from the perspective of being a taxpayer. I think uh, going out to the the free market and getting an insurance consultant it shows uh, it speaks volumes that uh, that we're looking out for the best interests of the staff and uh, not only the taxpayers. So I want to put yes. that on the record and thank you so for much for. You know, doing our diligent work. Okay, so uh, yeah. for it comes to pass, and Mr. Nunn is no longer on the board. I hope that uh, you know that spirit and the transparency is always there because insurance consultants are record, right? And it, it will be a self-funded plan, the similar yeah. to the one that we currently have. Yes. Uh, Mr. Garza, can I ask you a quick question, sir? And welcome aboard. Thank you for taking the time and the effort to come and talk to us, common folks, right? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President Hernandez and uh, uh, Superintendent Chavez and honorable members of the Board of Trustees. And for the record, I'm Roger Garza. I'm the senior consultant at the firm, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is correct. The process that you currently have is a third party administration process which is a clean paying uh, operation, if I can call it that. So we will negotiate those fees, and we will actually, when we solicit, you'll get to see the actual uh, submittals in a, in a data sheet uh, format so that you can see how we, we lowered those prices. Our goal is to lower the cost, uh, not try to compare the cost, so, and try to obtain the most benefits we can with those uh, lesser dollars. I'd like to congratulate you, Mr. Garza. Now uh, we're going to start working with you. I'm looking forward to it. And always um, keeping our staff in mind, looking for the best coverage for the best premiums for the district as well. Absolutely, ma'am. And actually, I think we introduced the entire uh, team uh, yesterday. We had six um, qualified individuals that actually work with us there at the office. So we are a dedicated team. Everybody's taking a portion of all the projects and put them together. So we actually have six people actually working on four Mercedes ISD. Good. I know in the past there's been concerns with high deductibles and high co-payments and so hopefully you can really look for the best deal out there for us and, and the best coverage for us. Absolutely. Staff. And that's going to be our target to lower all the costs on the employees and the district as well. That's good. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Garza, on your timeline. Uh, it says there that Friday, May 5th is the last day for questions. The, the, uh, April 20th was the posting for the RPs. What is, what is the last day for questions? What are you referring to there on that timeline that, that was presented? It, it's a good question, sir. What happens is carriers start asking for breakdowns of uh, age groups, census for, in particular, and we put a timeline because they'll, they'll drag their feet. They'll be working on another project and then on the last day of submittal, they'll call you up and ask, and, and it's, it's common, they'll call the district and, and ask for an extension because they're, they were tied up with another school district or another entity. What we do is we put a timeline, we actually tell them in advance, uh, after May 1st, we're not, uh, May 5th, we're not going to answer any more of your questions, so they all have to be in-house and they will all be posted on your website so everybody gets a fair shot. Okay, thanks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I, I can do that. I haven't done that yet, but I can do that. I'm available to do that. One of the, and that's a great question because right now what everybody is experiencing and, and Mercedes will have that as well, is a lock Mr. in the markets. In other words, Mr. you have Mr. one agency. Mr. Sutton, we're okay? Yeah. Okay. That will uh, 
uh, uh, locked, what they call them locked markets, meaning they have an agent of record authorization and they block from submittals so nobody can submit. And the way we process it is we assign markets. So we assign markets in the East Coast, the West Coast, the Northern half, so everybody gets an opportunity to be able to submit. There's three major risk companies. One of them is Amrisk, uh, Amwins, and Velocity. Those are your major uh, submitters. You may have them here already. We haven't seen that yet, but anyway, but we give them the opportunity not only to the incumbent, but to also to the other agencies that want to participate here as well. Uh, Mr. Garza, uh, I'm going to be very, try to be very delicate about this because it's so much, uh, my question to you would be more on the business side and the board, not so much the school district. Because um, we all have uh, accountability. And one of the things I want to look into, if it's possible, is the wishes of the board later on. Um, the previous um, consultants, you know, how the performance, I mean, did we do it right? You know, because I'm always looking, f in my perspective, right, as, you know, helping out the staff is, did we do a good job? You know, what is it we need to work on? Because I, I trust you a lot. I think you had a lot of experience. And maybe later on we have a conversation where it says, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, the board, this is where we need to do better next time, blah, blah, blah. And it's not so much administration, it's more like on the on the business side. Of, yes, uh, sir. Does it make sense, sir? Or? It, it does. I mean, there's certain processes that we'll bring to right. you. Right. And actually, we actually like for questions and answers. We don't like to present and then walk away and we understand that everybody is happy. That's not going to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to give you scenarios that you're going to ask us, would this be in the best interest of the employees? And if the answer is yes, then we go to the next step. Is it in the best interest of the plan in itself? And if the answer is yes, then we have a total committed program. Mm -hmm. Self-funded is very, very uh, a delicate process because you, uh, meaning, um, pardon me, Mercedes ISD is the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And when you become the insurance company, you have to act like the insurance company. And sometimes no is the best answer. That's the way they, the insurance companies operate. We try to get you to an 80-20 process, which is what the government says is the threshold. In other words, you can keep 20% in reserves, you pay out 80% in benefits. That doesn't necessarily work in a uh, entity because there's situations where the cost exceeds the expectation. So we try to make sure that it stays in line. Our staff is well trained to do that. We provide monthly reports to school districts where we try to contain the cost before it gets out of hand. So we, we're, we're gonna be committed to it. Uh, we, we have our, our reputations on the line. We, we'd like to make sure that when we leave here in a month or three months and we walk away and we look back and we look at it, you have happy employees, you have a happy plan, you have happy trustees, and quite frankly, you have plans that other school districts would like to have. Fair enough, sir. Any more uh, questions? Thank you, Mr. Gerson. Thank, Thank you, you very Garcia. much. Sir. Thank okay, you. so we have a recommendation of uh, admin. May I entertain a motion? So moved. Okay, so a motion by Ms. Vallejo. Second, please. Second. Second, Mr. Rodriguez. Any more discussion, guys? Okay, there's no more discussion. We have a motion from Ms. Vallejo, second by Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed to saying nay? Okay, motion passes unanimous. B4, discussion of possible actions to approve uh, to advertise the RFP for volunteer employee insur insurance products. Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends is uh, presented. If any questions, CFO is available. Okay, any discussion, colleagues? I just have a quick question, Ms. Garcia. Yes, ma'am. As, as we begin the, the RFPs for these that are uh, pointed out on here, like the, the cancer, accidental life, as we look into bringing someone in, are the employees going to have the option, if they choose to, to keep the one that they're currently on? As of right now, we've given the employee that option. Um, 
there comes a point where there's a lot of uh, individuals uh, selling products. So we want to try to consolidate and try to gain some more buying power. Um, but um, I think as of right now, we may, or are we, that, that's still up for consideration. Okay. That, that's going to be one of your options uh, as we move forward. But we've lost the purchasing power because there's so many companies that offer the same duplicated benefits. But the other thing we have to consider is some of these products are section 125. So under the IRS code, you have to pick a vendor. So what we try to do is, well, we actually do, we put a no loss, no gain provision on the RFP, mm -hmm. meaning employees can keep the level of benefits that they have without having to prove insurability. So whatever they have, they have that level. Now, if they want to keep what they have and take it home with them, they can. That's, that's entirely up to them. But when you sponsor a 125 administration program, you want to make sure you only have one vendor doing that. And that, that will get lower the premiums for everybody. So, uh, Mr. Gustav, sorry, but uh, I guess later on we'll have those conversations, right? Yes, sir. You'll give us the options. There'll be, when we do the presentation, the final presentation, you'll see the, the, the inventory, and then you'll see the, uh, the submittals, and then you'll see the consolidation of what, how, what the price differential was. So you'll, you'll get, and you'll have the option to do that. That'll be entirely on, on the board's uh, uh, agenda. So they'll have the option to take what, what, uh, uh, what recommendation you would like to see. Okay. What's that, Mr. Hill? Mm -hmm. um, no, like he said, once we see, see the bids and see what route to go, we can decide. Okay. So that's a good thing. Okay. okay. Any more uh, questions? Any more dialogue, colleagues? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Thank, thank you, Mr. Garcia. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, administration has a motion, and I'm sorry, has a. Uh, Recommendation, I apologize. Um, I can't hear a motion from Mr. Howe. Second, second please. Second. Any more discussion? Okay, so uh, a motion from Mr. Howe, second by Ms. Way. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone, uh, anyone opposed by saying nay? Okay, motion passes unanimous. <coughs> B5, discussion of possible action to approve the advertised RFP for pharmacy management services. Ms. Travis. The administration recommends is uh, presented. Okay, uh, any questions? Once again, you will get to be extremely verbal with the description as we uh, experienced in the past with certain matters. Uh, so, uh, do you have access to uh, HD? That's who we're using right now. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. And, and, and again, Mr. Hall, yes, sir. So what we're trying to do is, again, we're trying to take all of the, I guess, the caps that are on top of the current process that were placed there, uh, you know, uh, and we want to solicit so that we can bring those programs in. Yes, and actually, we, we've, we've already shared that data with, with staff, that information, so we do want to open it up a little bit more so we can access the better markets and, and the cheaper markets, actually. So we want to make get it more competitive if we can. Okay. Any more discussion? Any more questions? Thank you. Um, so we have a recommendation from Admin. May I entertain a motion? <coughs> okay. I have a motion from Mr. Howe. Second. Second by Mr. Rodriguez. Colleagues, any more discussion? Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Howe, uh, second by Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed by saying nay? Motion passes unanimous. Um, B6, discussion of possible actions to approve the advertised RFP for specific and aggregated medical and pharmacy claim stop loss insurance. Ms. Travis. The administration recommends as presented by the business office. Any questions, any comments? Okay, may I entertain a motion, Mr. Howe? Second? Second. Second, Ms. Weigel. Any more discussion, colleagues? In, okay, terms, of, in terms of the stop loss, is there, are there any current uh, 
market issues uh, we expect in, similar to what we had in the past year or so uh, what may affect us are is our claim history okay but are we looking at three years or just this past year It typically carries one C5, okay. but they'll take your uh, large claim uh, claimants, and that's how they evaluate the, the act for the specific. So mm -hmm. right now, if you ask about the market, the market in that particular area is actually a lot uh, bigger now than, than it was probably two years ago. Right. If I recall, we had... Uh, a rebate, correct? Was that something related to the pharmacy, or was that totally different? The rebates are related to pharmacy. Um, pharmacy, correct? This is for claims over $150,000 incurred by a single employee. Okay. So that's and a bit of a good news there, colleagues, right? Yeah. Almost half a million on the, the rebate, so mm -hmm. very good. So what are we looking at for the past five years, Ms. Garcia, as far as two claims submitted? I know this year, uh, this year we've had uh, three uh, large claims so far. I believe last year we had two. Of, I, I don't have the numbers with me, but we've had a couple that have been up there in So in that's cost. gonna play a big role as far as two, the cost? That, that does affect our premium. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, is there any more discussion? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion from Mr. Howe, second by Ms. Vajal. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed saying nay? Okay, motion passes unanimous. Uh, C, facility facilities. Uh, one, discussing possible action to approve uh, construction project expenses a1, uh, Rio Roofing Incorporated pay application number three for a roofing replacement at Mercedes High School. Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the uh, pay application as presented, and Mr. Herrera, facilities director, will be available. Any discussion? Any Good questions? afternoon. Um, I'd just uh, like to follow up with the engineer I know he's been informing us and keeping us informed on the status how are we doing sir with the high school the high school is substantially complete uh, they I, I believe they've already demobilized and if they didn't they are soon to start uh, we didn't do substantial completion walkthrough in the last few days because of the bad weather but as soon as it clears within probably the next week we're going to do substantial completion on the high school. Here we'll do a partial uh, at Mecca. And I believe that also the Chacon is also substantially complete. Uh, at Mecca, the only thing that's pending are the skylights of the main entry and the three roof access ladders that are they, they have not been delivered yet. As soon as we get them delivered, they're going to be installed. Okay. Thank you. So, so when, when would you say is the, the final completion date, more or less, for the high school? It should be. Uh, they are estimating uh, the first week of the summer break. Okay. The official substantial completion date is somewhere in June, mm -hmm. and that's not including about 30 or maybe 45 days of bad weather. We've not included all the, all the bad weather. We'll do it at the end. Okay. Uh, so far, it looks like uh, a good portion of the uh, contingency has not been used, unless we find some weird stuff when we have to install the, the skylights that I doubt it. So far, uh, there's a, a little more than $70,000 that will be returned to uh, the Mercedes ISD. Mm -hmm. at, at the, at, at, when closing out the project, we'll do a change order that will reduce the contract amount for the unused portions of the, of the allowance, mm -hmm. and we'll add, just for record keeping purposes, all the bad weather days. Okay. So the, 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 the contractor has been super efficient and fast. C. 
say that again, sorry. The substantial completion date. Uh, yes, said before. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, good evening, uh, Superintendent, Ms. Chavez, uh, Board President, uh, Mr. Hernandez, Trustees. Uh, just so we're clear, uh, the only pending uh, work that's going to be done here at the Early College are the skylights, uh, which are we're expecting. After in speaking to the foreman, he did say they're expecting delivery uh, early June. Uh, the work that uh, there will be no summer school here at this campus, and so uh, you know they intend to get the job done within two weeks upon delivery. Um, at the high school, uh, and just to clarify, got a, uh, uh, they're done as of today. Uh, so they're picking up their equipment, materials, uh, and they're moving on their work uh, to complete at Chacon Middle School. out documents that insurance can review if they want where there's engineering applied to calculate and that will lower the risk uh, and if I may uh, mr. Edward uh, Gonzalez our purchase director uh, did communicate that information uh, on the roof improvements uh, with the insurance carrier uh, and so they're aware of the improvements that are get, that are happening uh, currently uh, and so we hope that that's gonna make a difference uh, with the uh, new uh, with the new with the new year uh, kicking in, in the fall Mr. Uh, Herrera, with regards to what Mr. Howell just said, uh, several roofing projects have been undertaken this past year uh, in the district. How do you foresee that affecting your operation, the maintenance uh, operation, continuing into the, the, the heavy part of summer where a lot of, a lot of the work is sir, done? We, we have already seen a, a, a number of positives uh, that, that uh, we haven't got, received the phone calls and concerns that we had uh, for a number of years. So, uh, you know, and, and the goal of providing a safe and comfortable learning environment for our students and staff is here. Uh, it's a big improvement uh, just on, in regards to safety, you know, lighting, uh, fire alarm, uh, leaks affect every type of device that's in the ceiling. Uh, down to slip strips and falls. So the improvements that have been made here at Mecca and at the high school uh, are gonna make a, a ton of difference. It's a big plus, uh, and hopefully it's the, the start of uh, further improvements for, for, for our school district. So uh, I'm, you know, we're, we're, we're very happy. Okay, it'll ease the workload. Yes, sir. To be able to focus on other things, the, particularly yes, during the summer when you're really and busy work for custodians, for principals, uh, the phone calls, so it's a positive across the board. Uh, this is a payment application uh, for rear roofing, uh, which is application number three in the amount of $80,721.50 uh, for the roof replacement at the high school. Payment is for work and materials stored as of February 28th and certified by Robert Kishner. Okay, any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, uh, admin's uh, recommendation. Recommendation, sorry. Okay. So we have move. a motion. From I need to entertain a motion from. So, so okay, move. from Mr. Howe, second by Mr. Rodriguez. This is for a pay, pay application number three, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. That's um, C uh, A. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we have a motion from Mr. Howe, second by Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor, saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, say nay. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Um, C1B, uh, Real Roofing Incorporated. Pay application number four for the roofing replacement at Mercedes High School. Ms. Travis? The administration recommends the uh, application is presented. Okay, any discussion, colleagues? Okay, may I entertain the motion? On this one, sir, um, I see that it's pay application number four. I was reviewing the documents that were provided and, and I saw that uh, we used up all their contingency on that current deck replacement and I saw that we were still, the, the cost on that was uh, 6840 and we only had 5510 on that contingency. So we're going to use the, uh, the rest, the 1330 on that Betterment Fund allowance we're pulling from there to be able to cover the cost. 
Exactly, yes. Okay. It's like we have two, two savings accounts on the yeah. project. We maxed one out and, and the remaining was used on the, on the general betterment fund. So we, have, we still have the 11420 on the contingency for the betterment fund, but you said that we're near completion Next time. for yes. the high school, correct? Oh, we're, uh, that's on a change order uh, yes. payment yeah. application. That's on uh, C, correct? Uh, yes. we the next one. Payment application oh, okay. number four. I'm yes. sorry. Okay. That's that's the Thank one we're discussing, number four. Uh, but payment application. Um, oh. when, this is a rural roofing and submitting application number four in the amount of forty thousand seven hundred and fifty-five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, so I need uh, a motion, please. Yes. So, so moved. Move. Okay, from Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Vallejo. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Vallejo. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed saying nay? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Um, CC. Uh, Real Roofing Incorporated pay application number two for the roofing replacement at uh, Sergeant Chacon Middle School Gym. Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the pay application number two. Okay, so we have a recommendation from admin. To, um, may I, well, you want to have a discussion or you want to have any questions to Mr. Herrera? Real Roofing is submitted an application number two in the amount of $45,551. Um, payment is for work and material stored as of April 15, uh, 2023, and certified by Robert Kishner. Okay, thank you, Mr. Herrera. Any more discussion, uh, uh, colleagues? Sorry. May I entertain a motion, please? Okay, uh, for I have a motion for Mr. House, second by Mr. Garcia. Any more discussion? Just okay. uh, really quick, sir, how's the process going with Chacon? The, uh, the ridge has already been replaced. Uh, they're working on the rake, which is the, uh, the it's like a, the, the ends. They're, they're working on the uh, gutters and downspouts uh, and currently working on the brakes, which is where the sheet metal connects. Uh, they've already removed the previous one, so they're doing all the work and the process to, uh, to replace. Uh, the brakes is where the sheet metal connects and usually there's uh, drips that go through there that you know fall into the gym that's floor. That's the concern that I had in the past. And so they're currently working. Actually, we uh, spoke mm -hmm. to our uh, custodian, head custodian, to so we had some rain today, so he was down there and ensuring that we didn't have any leaks. So this rain, uh, you know, it does identify some of the. Hopefully, it doesn't identify any leaks. Uh, and so as of today, we were good, no leaks uh, as of today. But their work will continue uh, for the next two weeks. Thank you. What's the lifespan of those gutters? More or less, the lifespan of those new gutters that they were, that were installed. They have a 20-year warranty. Mm -hmm. uh, they typically last more unless there's a halo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Howe, a second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed by saying nay? Uh, motion passes. Um, C1D, uh, Real Roofing Incorporated. Pay application number five for the roofing replacement at the Mercedes Early College Academy. Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends pay application number five as presented by Mr. Herrera. Real Roofing is submitting payment application number five in the amount of 58,282. Uh, for the roof replacement at the early college, payment is for working material stored as of April 15 and certified by Rob Kishner. May I entertain a motion from uh, recommendation from admin? Okay, a motion from Mr. Garcia, second from Ms. Michael. Any discussion, colleagues? Okay, if there's no more discussion. We have a motion from Mr. Garcia, second by Ms. Michael. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Um, moving along with C, facilities two. Discussion possible action uh, change order number three to deck replacement to a Rio Roof Incorporated contract number 22-09-07, the Mercedes Early College Roof Replacement. Uh, Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the change, 
Uh, change order number three is presented by Mr. Herrera. Rear Roofing is uh, submitting change order number three uh, for the utilization of the uh, deck replacement allowance in the amount of 12540 um, Allowance contingency is 6000 Okay, Edmonds uh, recommending. May I entertain a motion? So move. Okay, from Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Howe. Okay, any discussion, colleagues? Could you just share with us, sir, um, as far as on that change order, what that entails? What was the unforeseen that was found after the, the work began? This is for this one. It's for the deck replacement for the early college. Uh, uh, the allowance that was initially uh, uh, allowed it was 62,000. Uh, this is the change order uh, number three. Uh, and so basically it's just the continuation of the replacement of the uh, uh, the, but uh, this was as, this was something that was not found in the initial assessment no. that we were having to add. No, well, it's an allowance that was already allotted, mm -hmm. but the deck replacement is doing as they're as they're they're replacing. Have any photos that we can? This one. This yes, this one. I saw them. They're in here. We were we were provided. So. Yeah. It's just a continuation uh, as well, of okay. the deck replacements that, that have been made. Uh, okay. There are some photos that are attached to. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And we're near completion with Mecca. You said it's just the lighting or how much more is? Just the, uh, the skylighting, uh, which okay. is scheduled hopefully for June upon okay. delivery. Okay. And the ladders okay. and final inspection. But deck replacement is pretty much complete? Mm -hmm. Complete. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is there any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, we have a motion for Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Howe. All in favor saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed by saying nay? Motion passes unanimous. Uh, facilities three, discussion and possible action on change order to deck replacement. 3A, change order number one, real roofing, incorporated contract number 22-09-07. The Mercedes High School roof replacement. Ms. Chavez. The administration recommends the change order number one is presented by Mr. Herrera. Mr. Herrera. Uh, roofing is submitting change order number one uh, in the amount of 8,170 uh, at the high school. Um, the remaining deck allowance, contingency allowance is 5,550, uh, but they are seeking, the application is for $8,170. Okay, colleagues, we have a recommendation from admin. May I entertain a motion? So move. Okay, so motion for Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Garcia. Any discussion, any questions? Okay, is there no more discussion? Let's follow along with a uh, motion for Mr. Rodriguez, uh, second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed by saying nay? Okay, motion passes. Um, let's move on to 3B, change order number two, real roofing corporate contract number 22-09-07 of the Mercedes High School roof replacement, Ms. Travis. The administration recommends change order number two as presented by Mr. Herrera. Roofing is submitting a change order number two, uh, deck replacement allowance. Uh, the change order is for inferencing conditions and undiscovered uh, replacement of uh, the metal deck uh, in the amount of 5,510. Okay, may I entertain a motion, colleagues? So moved. Okay, have a motion from Ms. Vajol. Second, please. Second. Second from Mr. Garcia. Any more discussion, colleagues? What section was this? I'm looking at the, at the photos. Was this the, uh, the, the, the G-Wing? No. The E-Wing. E-Wing, okay. E-Wing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first they did the G-Wing and then they moved on to the E-Wing. Okay. Any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, so we have a motion from Ms. Vallejo, second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed by saying nay? Okay, motion passes. Let's move to four. A okay, discussion of possible action on the change order number one to the betterment fund. For a real roofing corporate contract number 22-09-207 of the Mercedes High School roof replacement. Uh, Ms. Chavez. 
The administration recommends the change order number one as presented by our facilities director, Mr. Arena. River Phoenix submitted a change order number one using the Betterment Fund allowance um, in the amount of, um, what is it, 1,330. Uh, remaining contingency allowance is 11,420. Okay, we got a recommendation from admin. May I entertain a motion? So moved. Okay, for a motion from Ms. Weichel. Second, please. Second for Mr. Garcia. Any more questions, dialogue? Any, Any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, there's no more discussion. Uh, let's move with the motion from Ms. Weichel. Second by Mr. Garcia. All in favor by saying aye? Aye. aye. Anyone opposed by saying nay? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, sir. D, safe schools. Discussion and consideration of possible action to adopt the resolution related to the district's prevention of uh, child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and sex trafficking instruction. Ms. Travis? The administration recommends the resolution. This will open the conversation at the district uh, through the SHAC committee to be able to look at a program that will address the required training. And within that committee, I have safe schools and district head nurse and one of our social workers heading up that process um, right now. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Uh, recommendation for admin. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Garcia. Second, please. Second from Mr. Howe. Any discussion? So, Mr. Saldana, we're okay with the uh, motion? Uh, yeah, motion to uh, approve uh, the resolution. Okay, so we're okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I move that the Board of Trustees adopt the resolution related to the district's prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and sex trafficking instruction. Okay, so that was the motion. We're okay, right? And we have the second by Mr. Howe. Okay, any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Garcia, second by Mr. Howe. All in favor by saying aye? Aye. aye. Anyone opposed by saying nay? Okay, motion passes. Okay, moving along with our agenda, we're going to the consent agenda. I guess I'll start from my far right. Uh, Mr. Howe, would you like to pull anything from the consent agenda, sir? Ms. Weichel? No. Mr. Rodriguez? No. No, sir. Okay. Well, near do I. So, um, may I have a, uh, a motion to accept the consent agenda in its entirety? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Uh, second? Yes, yeah, second. Okay, Ms. Weichel. Any more discussion, colleagues? Okay, so a uh, motion from Mr. Garcia, second by Ms. Vallejo. All in favor by saying aye? Aye. aye. Anyone opposed by saying nay? Okay, uh, motion passes unanimous. Executive session A, personnel pursuant to section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code and attorney consultation pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. A1, the resignation, termination, appointments, evaluation, reassignments, duties, and discipline, professional, paraprofessional, non-contract uh, non employees, teachers, substitutes, and substitutes for maintenance, transportation, cafeteria, department. A2, discussion and consideration of the renewal of teacher contracts, request for approval for a proposed non-renewal of teacher term contracts, and or request for approval of the termination of teacher pro probation, uh, probationary contracts for 2023-2024 school year. I apologize. A3, discussion and consideration to rescind the termination, uh, termination of Adrian Lattice term contract, teacher contract. A4, discussion and consideration to rescind 
termination of Santiago Salazar term contract, principal contract, and accept the resignation. A5, level three grievance here, Ricardo Hinojosa. B, student discipline. C, discussion and possible consultation with attorney regarding pending or contemplated litigation, settlement matters, and or matters where the professional duty under state board requires private consultation with the school attorney. It is 7.33 p.m. and we are in executive session, colleagues. <laughs>